Speak to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Now, there's a lot of talk in this gospel reading about glory, and so I, I brought you a, a few uh, uh, cases of, of glory. I need you to take your masks off so that you can be heard clearly. So, David, you played football this past year at, at, at Landrum High School. Yep. Did you like uh, catching crossing patterns as a tight end over the middle? I love this. And, and then running people over, right? Right? Oh, you yeah. love that, right? You, and, and you love it when your teammates give you lots of praise and glory for all the great stuff you do? Right? So what, say that louder, yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, he said. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Now, he's a football player, right? But now Cooper over here, he's a soccer player, and he scores lots of goals. You know how I know? Because I read about him in the Tryon Daily Bulletin, like, all the time, right? And he just keeps scoring more and more goals. So do you like scoring goals, Cooper? A lot, yeah. A lot. You hear that? He likes scoring goals a lot. Now, why do you like scoring goals, Cooper? Well, because... Glory, okay, all right, all right, what else? You win the game. You win the game, right? And chicks date people who score goals, right? Okay, well, right, isn't that true? Yeah, okay, great, okay. Now you two can go sit down now, okay? Your glory is done, okay? All right, yeah. I gotta tell you, um, I was gonna call Nelson Rickenbacker to ask me to, to ask him how it, it, it was to hit lots of home runs, but he, he wanted to sit with Becky, and I was going to ask Sam, but he was kind of already occupied. Uh, but we all know this. Look, we love to succeed. We love to do great stuff, and we love people to admire us when we're doing great stuff. Hey, that's kind of cool, right? Now, there's a problem, though. There's a problem when we try and bring glory to ourselves, right? And the problem is, it always runs out, right? It always runs dry on some level, right? You can never have enough glory to yourself once you start to get some glory. You always want some more, and there's never enough glory to go around, right? I would love all the glory in the world. I'll just suck it right out of Kathy. I suck all the glory that she could give me all out of her, right? But we know that that well eventually dries up, right? And so we have a reading today that kind of turns kind of the world's notion of glory on its head, right? The glory that we all seek, right? That's not what this reading is about. This reading is about training us and the whole world in what it truly means to give glory where it needs to go, right? So at the beginning of our reading, we have, we have the, uh, the, uh, the shepherds having the glory of God shine all around them, right? And they're shining all around them. And, 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 and before the angel can say really anything else, the angel says, do not be afraid. Now, the angel says, do not be afraid, because it says they are afraid with a great fear. It says terrified in your translation, but in the Greek it says they were afraid with a great fear. The glory of God has shined all upon them, and it was overwhelming. They didn't know what to do with the glory of God. It was this, this glory of God was so overwhelming that all they could do is tremble and fear. So before the angel of God can say anything, he says, do not be afraid. Ian, does this sound like something Jesus might sound, say later in the Gospel of Luke? Often, exactly. So we are being trained, you might say, not only to see the newborn Christ, but to understand why Jesus has actually come. Angel says, do not be afraid of the glory of God because I have good news for you. I have good news for you of great joy. Not of good joy, not of average joy, but of great joy. Kind of like when you win a dance concert, right? Great joy. 
because that which you didn't even know you needed, and yet you've been waiting for not only your whole life, but for all of Israel's existence, that has been made real today. Here, you are receiving the newborn King, the Messiah, the Lord Jesus, the only Son of God. Now, part of what the angel is saying is this. Listen up, guys. This isn't about me. Listen up. This isn't actually about you. This is about God. And just as he says what it is that God is doing, not only is the angel of God there, but the whole heavenly army, and that's what it is in the Greek, stratiotos, the whole heavenly army is there giving glory to God in the highest heaven and peace to his people and all of those people who are favored by God. Now it says that all of the heavenly choir of angels was praising God and gave God glory. Keep your antenna up. This is what the angels are training us for. Okay, they are not only giving us the content of Revelation. God is doing something great. He's sending his only son, the Messiah that you've been waiting for and that you need, but he is training our lips and our hearts to praise and give glory to God to rearrange where it is that we feel the glory in our lives needs to be and go, which is to God. Now, we go on down a little bit further, right? And guess what? The angels, all of the heavenly host of angels, disappear and go back up to heaven. And the shepherds say, I think we have a mission here. We've been sent to go see this newborn king, this newborn savior, this newborn Messiah. We have a mission. We better get going to Bethlehem because there's something there waiting for us. When they get there, they see exactly what it is that the angel has told them, and they begin to tell Mary and Joseph exactly what it is that was told to them by the angel, which is confirming what it is that Mary has already been told in the first chapter, that this is not just a private revelation, this is a public revelation, that this is about all of Israel, and that this isn't about Mary, this isn't about the shepherds, this isn't even about the angels, this is about what God is doing for all of them, for all of us. And when they disclose this, it says, everyone, everyone was amazed at what they said. Now that word, thamadzo, thamadzo, is to wonder or to awe or to, or to be amazed, right? Everyone is amazed and has awe at what is happening. And then, after they tell this and they begin to leave Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus, they begin to praise God and give God glory. Now this is profound. The same two verbs used as participles that the angels were doing, anundon and doxa, is the same thing that the shepherds wind up doing. Anundas and doxazo. In other words, They have not only heard the content of Revelation, but their whole being has been rearranged so that they have gone from fear 
to amazement, to praise and glory. That is the profound journey that all of us are being asked to go on with all of the shepherds, with Luke himself, and with everyone else who's ever read this gospel. Hey, stop being afraid. Receive what it is that God has in store for you. Be amazed and then go praise and give glory to God so that other people can hear you and hear the word of God and have their whole being changed by what it is that God is up to in your life, in the life of the whole world. is incredible on one hand to imagine that God sends his only son for us. Sometimes when we're in a lot of pain, Kathy, sometimes when we think that the world is pressing down upon us, it's even more difficult to imagine that God is actually working in us, changing us from fear to awe, to glory and praise. Some days it feels like all I can do is pull the covers over my head and be very afraid. And then I remember that the angels who shone the glory of God all around the shepherds told them, do not be afraid. Do not wallow in your fear of what it is that God is doing because something more profound than you can ever imagine is happening to you right now. The glory of God, as Luke would say, is being poured down upon you. Do you want it? Do you want the glory of God? Well, Luke's got two suggestions. How about you put down the fear and begin to give God glory and praise with all of your heart. That's the good news of why Jesus comes for us. That's why the good news is for all people. That's why we are being trained here tonight to let the fear go and be people of glory and praise for all that our God is doing for us. Amen.